The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. We're so glad to see you guys on this beautiful morning. Uh, we want to be sure and welcome our, visit, welcome our visitors on YouTube later in the morning. And we certainly hope that at some point you will be able to join us in person and we might be able to visit a little bit. Um, please remember to sign the friendship registers that are in your pews and put these into the uh, collection plates when we take to our tithes and offerings. Um, if you are visiting with us for the first time, we are so glad to have you. And we ask that you share any information you are comfortable with on that registry so that we may contact you later with a note telling you how glad we were that to have you visit with us today. Please note all the announcements in the bulletin. Uh, Kathy Hollinsworth has asked that I remind everyone the uh, anything, any information you want included in the June newsletter needs to be gotten to her as soon as possible, preferably early in the week. Um, two other announcements I want to highlight are the uh, some special events we have going on this summer. Our Creative Arts Camp, which will be on July the 8th through the 12th, and our Vacation Bible School, which is July 29th through the 31st. I'm sure all help would be welcomed for either one of those events, and they sound like a lot of fun. I know Bible School is, and I'm sure the Arts Camp is going to be equally as fun. If you have any questions or you would like to know more about this or volunteer to help, you can contact Pam Goff for the Creative Arts Camp or Dinah Arnott for the Vacation Bible School. Are there any other announcements this morning? Before we get to our list of our prayer list at the back, are there any other prayer requests that we have this morning? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Would you please join me to the inside back page so that we may remember our prayer list by reading these names aloud? Family and loved ones of Peggy Beasley, family and loved ones of Helen Dean, Kelly Wheeler, Joel and Claudia Pugh, Abby Cook, Sam, Sarah, and David, a former co-worker of Martha Brubaker, a friend of the congregation, Wanda Simonas, Terry Johnston, Lynn Angle, Mike Trout, Anna Smith, Estelle Dobbins, Mary Childress, Nicholas Keeling, Patty Walker Jordan. Uh, we, in your bulletin, is listed that we'll be doing a memorial prayer this morning, but we have postponed that until next Sunday, so we'll be doing that prayer next Sunday morning. Okay. Now, let us stand and greet each other with the peace of Christ. Now center yourselves for worship during the prelude.
As you are able, please stand for our call to worship. God of wind and fire, when you send your spirit, we are created anew. God of mighty oceans and still waters, when we receive your baptism, we are born anew. God of bread and wine, when we eat at your table, we are nourished anew. So pour out your spirit, let sacred waters flow. Fill us with holy food. May our hearts and our hands be open wide to receive your gifts of life. Amen. your heads with me as we join together in prayer. Pour out your Holy Spirit, Lord, upon us. May we together with all believers be filled with the awe at what the crucified, risen, and ascended Savior has accomplished for our fallen world. May we be inflamed to speak and live as those in whom the Spirit lives. In Jesus' name we pray, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, through all eternity. Amen. You may be seated. Our time of honesty before God recognizes this Pentecost Sunday, the way the Spirit moves in each of us. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and in faith. Spirit of God, you are the breath of creation, the wind of change that blows through our lives, 
opening us up to new dreams and new hopes, new life in Jesus Christ. Forgive our closed eyes, which fail to see the needs of your world, blind to the opportunities of service and love. Forgive our closed hands, which clutch our gifts and our wealth for our own use alone. Forgive us our closed hearts, which limit our affections to ourselves and our own. Spirit of new life. Forgive us, break down the prison walls of our selfishness, that we might be open to your love and open for service in your world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, in Christ, by the power of the Spirit, we are united with Christ and given a new spirit live in the joy and peace of that assurance. Join me in our prayer for illumination. Shall we pray? Holy God, may the Spirit burn in our minds, in our wills, and in our feelings as we read and proclaim the Word of God. Speak to us, O burning power of God, that we may sense the light and heat of your presence. Amen. Our scripture reading is such a familiar and beloved one and probably has been read nearly every Pentecost that you have been here. Um, oh, I forgot. Thank you. I did that and I forgot it. Thank you. Thank you, Boots. <laughs>
seated. Thank you for that. Having prayed that the Holy Spirit will be present with us in the reading of scripture and the hearing of the word, um, now we go to our reading from the scripture of Acts. When the day of Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered together in one place. Suddenly, there was noise from the sky which sounded like a strong wind blowing, and it filled the whole house where the disciples were sitting. Then they saw what looked like tongues of fire which spread out and touched each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were Jews living in Jerusalem, religious people who had come from every country in the world. When they heard this noise, a lar large crowd gathered. They were all excited because all of them heard the believers speaking in their own languages. In amazement and wonder, they exclaimed, These people who are talking like this are Galileans. How is it then that all of us hear them speaking in our own languages? Some of us are from Rome, both Jews and Gentiles converted to Ju Judaism. And some of us are from Crete and Arabia and many other countries far and wide. Yet all of us hear them speaking in our own languages about the great things that God has done. Amazed and confused, they kept asking each other, what does this mean? But others made fun of the believers saying, these people are drunk. Then Peter stood up with the other 11 apostles and in a loud voice began to speak to the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, listen to me and let me tell you what this means. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. Instead, this is what the prophet Joel spoke about. This is what I will do in the last days, God says. I will pour out my spirit on everyone. Your sons and daughters will proclaim my message. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will have dreams. Yes, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will proclaim my message. I will perform miracles in the sky above and wonders on the earth below. There will be blood, fire, and thick smoke, the sun will be darkened and the moon will turn red as blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. And then whoever calls out to the Lord for help will be saved. This summer, in July, I will be attending a week-long training course that has the title African American Autobiographies, Religious Autobiographies. And the premise of the course is that through reading autobiographical information that others have written, we will be encouraged and empowered to examine our own story and look at the God points in our own story and use that as a form of sharing our faith and sharing the gospel. I spent 10 years, as most of you know, working at a children's hospital in Cincinnati. And in that time, I saw a lot, I mean, I can't even begin. You know, we can't even begin. 
But I do believe that God puts us in places for reasons. And that if God has placed us in places where we do ministry at the margins, we are obligated um, to share what we have learned and to be a witness to that. And so on this Pentecost Sunday, I would like to share with you some of the things that I learned about language. It turns out that language is a very complicated task. It takes a very high level of brain function to pull this off. Because if you think about it, there are letters and letters have sounds and we put those sounds together in words and then there are like, like billions and billions of combinations of sound and words that come from them. And then we attach meaning to that. And then we kind of hope that everybody understands the same kind of general meaning, meaning about any particular word that we're using. And then we string those words all together in sentences. And when we put them together in different ways, they have new and different kinds of meanings. And our brain is supposed to decode all of that both in sound and in print. And if you think about it, it's actually kind of miraculous, isn't it? That we can have thoughts and we can have experiences and that we can find a way that God has given us a way to share that with other people. Now, language doesn't only require decoding when we hear what other people are saying or writing to us, but it also requires encoding when we want to share our thoughts and feelings with other people. And so we need to, if we're going to be able to function in life at all, we need to be able to take our experiences and code them in this thing called language and then share that with other people. And so now I want you to think about all the layers that there are. There's encoding and decoding verbally. There's encoding and decoding in printed form. And then all of those permutations have places where that can go wrong. So much to my shock, um, and I, I learned this because we had um, speech and language therapists that did assessments for every single child that came into the area where I worked. And what I learned was you can be really great at any one of those four quadrants, but you could also have very, um, extreme deficits in any one of those four quadrants. And so it could actually happen where um, someone could be like amazing at spoken language and not at all be able to manage it on the written page. And I remember saying one time to the speech therapist, why can't they just like say it out loud and write down what they said? And she just laughed and she said it doesn't work that way. And I focus on language today because in our text, it says that not only were people doing this process of language encoding, but they were doing it in other languages for other people to hear. And there were others in the room that also were able to do the decoding process and hear what others had been saying and it all was to the glory of God. And so in the way that we can use, there are lots of other ways we encode our experiences, don't get me wrong. We code our experiences in music and we have amazing sounds that we make and other people feel emotions based on what piece of music they might be hearing at the moment. We encode things in dance. We encode things in art. 
And each of us has a particular strength in, in one of these ways of encoding. And for those of us who are able to have language be one of those methods, it is truly a blessing. I mean, I would leave work so grateful that my brain could encode and decode. It is such a gift, and we forget how miraculous that gift is. And so we had people in this situation that were encoding the story of the Word of God and doing it in languages that others could hear and understand. And there were decoders un, um, translating what people were saying for other people. And we hear from the story that there was a tremendous sense of unity as a result of that. And so now I want to challenge you to think about how we use language. Because it is so often true in our culture today that we use language in divisive ways. And we forget sometimes how powerful words can be. And we forget to choose our words carefully and to deliver them kindly. And if there is a lesson from this scripture, among many of the lessons, one of them is that God can be in the language, and that God can use and will use our language to help share the good news of Jesus Christ. And that God, through the Holy Spirit, can break down barriers in language. But it's our task to invite God into that conversation. And so, when we read about all the things that it says that the Spirit will do, I will pour my Spirit on everyone, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams, your sons and your daughters will proclaim my message. We are to use our language to the glory of God. And we are to trust that God is speaking to us in all manner of ways. I used to say, if I, you know, not that I ever presume that I'm God, but people would say to me, um, can, like, can you trust what, like, sometimes will God speak to you in your dreams? And I said, it says in the Bible that's true. And honestly, if I was God, 